Hello guys, I'm James. Today I'm going to run you through our Corrado 461 Hire Van. We're going to start on the outside and we'll show you how everything works and then we're going to hop on the inside afterwards and I'll show you all the controls inside. So if you follow me, first thing, most important thing with all vehicles is the fuel. They're not going to go anywhere without it being full of diesel. When you pick your van up from us, it will be full of diesel. When you return it, we just ask you to fill it back up for us. So nice and simple, just next to your passenger door, you've got your diesel cap. You open that with your main ignition key, you just pop it in, just like filling up your car, and it comes out, diesel goes in there. Just underneath your diesel cap, you've got this little blue cap. This is for your add blue. Um, you shouldn't need to top that up, um, but if you do, there'll be a little tub in the back of the van for you, um, and you can top your add blue up with the little blue on there. Keep following me around. The next part on the passenger side we come to is this flap here. So this is for your hookup. So also in the back of your van, you're going to have this hookup cable. And when you get to your site, wherever you stay in, you plug one end into your van, one end into your electric socket on your pitch, and then you've got mains electric in your vehicle. Keep coming around, we've got a couple of vents. Um, you don't need to do anything with these, just make sure you don't cover them up with anything. Don't lean any chairs against it, any clothes, anything like that. Air does need to get in and out of those vents. We then come to your first locker. So all the lockers on the van are worked with the small key. So you've got two keys, it's the little one that does all your lockers. So this one on this side is your toilet cassette. So if you're using the toilet in the vehicle, every couple of days you're going to need to empty your toilet cassette. To do that, it's nice and simple. In here you can see this grey box. Underneath is a little blue tab. You just want to lift the tab up and the whole cassette comes out nice and easy. Once it's out, you're going to need to, to empty it. So to do that, this pipe at the top twists around, cap at the end comes off take that cap off, hold your airlock button and then you can empty your cassette. Once you've done that, this cap, fill it with the blue chemicals in the back of your van and put it all back together how it was to begin with, just like that, and then that, and push straight back into its housing. When you push it into your housing, you want to make sure that this blue tab is pushed all the way in. You don't want it sat on top, you need to make sure it's pushed and locked in and it's not going anywhere. Right, walking around to the back of the van, we've got your bike rack. So if you're taking bikes with you, it's nice and easy. Grab your middle rail, pull the bike rack down, that's going to lock into place at the bottom. You then load your bikes on, whichever rail you want them on, if it's one, two or three bikes, lock the wheels in with your straps and then depending which rail you're on you pull down the relevant arm and that locks over your, your middle beam of your bike to put it all back away push your arms up push your bottom rail and that locks into place there for you we've then got your rear storage so with these style of locks they work a little bit differently Pop your key in and give it a twist and you'll notice that the, the lock pops out. You then want to twist that to actually unlock it and that's what releases it. There we go. And then in here is your rear storage. So at the moment we've got the bottom bunk bed down. If you need this storage for more stuff, um, say you're taking five bikes with you and you need to put the other two in here you can lift this bottom bed up just by pulling this black catch down here pull that towards you and then the bed will lift up and it will double the size of your rear storage in the back of the van is all the bits and bobs that we've mentioned throughout the video so you've got your toilet chemicals your hookup cable your hose pipe wheel chocks everything that you need to, to use the van will be put in the back of the van for you. You've also got this bit. This is your awning handle. So all vans come with a, a roll-out awning on them, and this is the handle you use to wipe that out. 
So it extends just by loosening and tightening the black catch. You can see it's a bayonet fitting at the end and that just slides into the left hand side of your awning. Once it's in, it'll lock into place and then you just start twisting and that's going to start winding your awning out for you. Once your awning's out to a, a point where you can reach it, you've got two legs that drop down, one on each side. So at the end, you've got a little silver catch. You just want to pull that catch towards you and then drop your leg out. Once your leg's out, push your awning to the height you want it and then just lock the leg in with the smaller grey catch and then that's locked into place then. And you do the same on both sides and then you can wind your awning all the way out if you want it out a little bit further and then just reverse that to put it all away If you keep coming round, the next point is your water filler point. So you've got an onboard water tank that will hold all your fresh water and every time that runs out you'll need to fill it back up again. So again with your little key, take your cap out and then the hose pipe that's in the back of the van, you put the hose pipe in, you start filling your tank up and then when we pop inside I'll show you how you see when your tank's full. Nice and easy with that one. And then the final thing on the outside is your gas locker. So in this locker you'll have two gas bottles. You'll notice one bottle is connected and one bottle isn't connected. When you get to your site or wherever you're staying, you just need to switch your bottle on and you do that just by twisting the top anti-clockwise and that'll turn your bottle on. If your first bottle was to run out, there's a little spanner in your glove box and you're going to undo this nut here and then you're just going to put it onto this bottle and this is your spare bottle. Whenever you're going to start travelling, try and remember to turn your bottle off again. Okay. Right, we'll now pop into the vehicle and I'll start showing you the controls inside the van. So your habitation door, you unlock and lock that with your little key again. And then you have got an electric step to make it easy getting in and out. The button for this step is just your first button on your panel here. There we go. So once you're in your van, you're going to need to turn it on. To do that, you've got this control panel above the door. The on and off button is this bottom left button. Press that, you'll notice the green light will illuminate and now all your lights, all your power, everything will work for you. You've got another symbol above that and you'll notice the orange light is on next to it. That orange light indicates that you're plugged into mains electric. So all your sockets work, everything works. You don't need to worry about power. If you weren't hooked up, what you'll notice is your three pin sockets dotted around the van won't work, but all your USB sockets will still work. So even if you're not hooked up, you can still charge your phones, your iPads, you can still use everything, just not through the three pin sockets. On the right hand side of this panel, we've got three buttons. Your top button, when you press and hold that, will illuminate what voltage you've got left in your leisure battery. So if you weren't hooked up, your battery is going to start draining. Once it drains down to below 11.6 volts, you're going to start losing power. You're not going to be able to, to use the van as you, you could, uh, and you're going to need to hook it up and charge it up again. So if you're what we call wild camping, you'll want to keep an eye on your battery level.
middle button this is your fresh water so this is the water we were talking about earlier so on the outside once you've filled it up you'll notice this gauge will go up to 100 percent the more fresh water you use the more you're going to start filling your wastewater tank up and to check the levels of your wastewater tank is the bottom button and what you'll notice now is it's empty because it's not illuminating so once you've showered use the sink things like that you're going to fill your wastewater up once that's full we're going to need to empty that and i'll show you that at the end of the video coming into the kitchen area so you've got your sink your three gas hobs and then underneath you've got an oven and a grill so with your sink this works just by lifting the tap lift your tap up and then you've got cold and hot water you've then got your three gas hobs so with these there isn't a built-in ignition you do need to use a lighter or a match to light these but they work just like they would at home press and hold down to let the gas come through and then light it hold it for a couple of seconds and then your hob is on and then you've got two settings you've got a low setting and a high setting and that's on all three hobs underneath we've got your oven and grill this one does have a built-in ignition which is just there so if you wanted to use your oven it's to the right press and hold and then light and then you might just be able to see the flame lift at the back there we've then got the fridge on the other side so this is an automatic fridge it works itself basically so if you power it on just by pressing the end button you'll notice your screen will illuminate. With this screen, you can choose what source you want to use, um, or what most people will do is leave it in the automatic mode. So if you press this first button until you get to the letter A, your fridge is now working in an automatic mode. So if you're hooked up, it's gonna run off hookup. If you're driving the vehicle, it'll run off your alternator. And if you've not got either of them power sources, it'll run off your gas bottles. Okay, so best thing to do is leave it in automatic and then let your fridge work itself. Middle button is the temperature. So if you want it really cold, most people have it on level three or level four, and that's a nice cool temperature. And then the final thing on the end is vent um, heaters. So what you'll notice is on your fridge, you've got these rubber seals all the way around. If you had your fridge on too cold and these seals froze up and it was quite difficult to open and close your door, you're going to turn your rubber seal heaters on and that's going to thaw them out and make it a lot easier to open and close your fridge and your freezer. Okay, so as long as that A is on, your fridge is working. It's all good. Above the fridge, we've got this cupboard and in this cupboard is your TV. So whenever you want to watch telly, you're going to slide the telly out of its housing and then twist it either towards the front if you're all sat in the lounge area or if you want to watch it from the two rear bunk beds, you can do. And then all you do is flick it on with the TV remote and you'll have to retune it every now and then depending on how far you've travelled and then start flicking through your channels. To the right is your wardrobe space so in your wardrobe uh, not a lot in here apart from your rcd so if you were on a campsite and you've tried using a hair dryer and you've got your phone charged and you've used too much power and it's caused it to trip you've got two trips you've got the first one in this wardrobe which is for the van if it's not this one that's tripped try the the actual trip on the the electric point on your pitch Coming through to your dinette area, on this one you've got two small dinettes, you've got two single seats this side and then two double seats on this side. Your seats that are forward facing have three point seat belts and your seats that are rear facing just have lap belts. Okay. In your dinette area you've got this small black control panel. This panel is your heating and your hot water. 
So whenever you want to turn the heating on in the van or whenever you want to warm your water up, it's this panel you're going to come to. So to power the panel on, just press your middle button and then you're going to see it brings up a black line and four icons underneath the black line. As you toggle through these icons, you'll notice they're just flashing in turn. And that'll go all the way around and back to the start. So your first icon, when it's flashing, you want to give it a press. And this one's the heating within the van. So your heating can be anything from five all the way up to 30 degrees. If you wanted it at 22, you'd give that a press. And we now know your heating's on because you get a small icon above the icon you've just selected. So we know our heating's on now because above the motorhome is a flame. Next one along is your hot water. So same again, when it's flashing, give it a press. And on this one, we've got three settings. We've got eco, hot, and boost. Eco is gonna warm your water up to 40 degrees. Hot is gonna warm your water up to 60 degrees and boost or warm your water up to 60 degrees as quickly as it can. So if you're in a bit of a rush, you can put it on boost and that's gonna warm your water up in about 15 minutes. Um, and then you've got nice hot water. But if you want our water on hot, give it a press and you'll notice as before, we now get an icon above the line. So we now know that our hot water's working. What you'll then find is the two icons above the line are flashing. When they're flashing, that means that it's still getting to temperature. So when your little flame's flashing, that means your heating's still warming up. And when your hot water's flashing, that means you, your hot water's still warming up. Once they go solid, they're to temperature. Next one along, we've got a little gas bottle with the two lightning bolts. This chooses what you want to run your heating and hot water off. You can either run it off gas or you can run it off electric. Um, if you're hooked up, you can run it off electric and then you're just using your main electric you've got from your pitch. If you're not hooked up, you can run it off gas. And there are your, your two selections. And then the final one is your fan speed for your heating. So if your heating's on but you're not quite warm enough, instead of turning the temperature up and using more gas, you can turn your fan speed up and it'll blow your heating through the van a bit quicker. And then to turn it all off, turn everything off and then press and hold your middle button for a few seconds and that turns your panel off. Moving on into the bathroom. So in here we've got, this is what we call a washroom. So in here you've got your sink and your toilet and then if you pull this back wall towards the toilet that then gives you your shower area okay. your shower works exactly the same way as a kitchen tap just lift your mixer tap up hot and cold and your water will start coming through same with your bathroom tap just lift it up and your water will start coming through with your toilet it's a little bit different to a normal toilet you'd have at home your seat does swivel round so you're not bashing your knees off the wall when you go to flush the toilet, the flush button's just at the back. And what you'll notice is when you press and hold that button, it'll just fill your toilet with water. It's not actually gonna drop or flush, should we say, as a, a normal toilet does. So once it's full, to actually drop that into the cassette, underneath is this gray little lever. You want to slide that lever away from you and you'll notice that's what drops it into your cassette always make sure that you close that once you're finished next on guys we've got your windows and your roof lights so all your windows all your roof lights have a fly screen for the daytime and a blackout blind for the night time so to open your roof lights you'll notice you've got a white button just here. If you press that white button in and pull the rail down, you can then open your roof lights. Your roof lights have fully open and then two semi-open positions. 
whenever you're driving the vehicle, you must make sure all your roof lights are locked past the white button. If you don't lock them, the wind will get underneath it and it'll rip your roof light off. So always make sure that they're locked. Same with your windows. So your window, side windows. Again, you've got the fly screen. blackout blind to open these ones you've got these black catches you need to open so to open them press your black button in and then you can twist them around and then from there you can open your window okay. whenever you're driving you must make sure that like your roof lights all of these windows are closed and that the black catches are locked in Okay, so onto your beds, you've obviously got your two bunk beds at the back of the van and then you've got a ladder to get into the top one. You've then got your big double bed over the driver's cabin. So pull your, your front down and you've got your bed and again you've got your ladder to get in and out of that bed. And then we've got the makeup bed in your dinette area. So if you're using this bed, um, it's very easy to make up. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to lift your bottom cushions up on each seat. So just lift them up, top them out of the way. Just like that. You're then going to lift your table up 45 degrees, fold your leg in half just by pressing this black button in. table then comes off the top rail and sits on the bottom rail in the middle of where the two seats are and then you can put your, your cushions back down and then just on the back of your top bed you'll see a white cushion that sits to fill the middle gap and that's how you make your bed makeup kit there. Drain your waste water if you look in your glove box, you'll find this Allen key looking device. This connects to the little rail that's just sticking out underneath the van here. You pop it on the end and then you want to twist it 90 degrees and that's going to start releasing your waste water out of that pipe there. And then check your panel inside and you'll see when it's completely empty. Final thing then guys, we'll move on into the cab and we'll just go through how the engine side of things work. So the front of the van is just a Fiat Ducato van, it's just like driving anything. You're a manual gearbox, so if we start the engine, the first thing you'll notice is a very loud beeping sound. That loud beeping means that your step is still out. So if we just pop the step in, You'll notice that beeping will stop. So there we go. Holly's just popped the step in and now the beeping stops. So whenever you hear that beeping, it'll be your step. Now sometimes you'll think your step is in, but the beeping will still be happening. If that happens, just put your step out and put it back in and just make sure it's come all the way into the van before you set off. So with the engine starting, manual gearbox, nice and straightforward, pull your, your black catch for reverse. You'll notice when you go into reverse, it'll bring up your rear view camera. And as soon as you drop out to reverse again, it'll go back to whichever screen you had on to begin with. With your main head unit, you've got your sat nav, your radio, and all your bits and bobs that you need. So if you wanna go to your sat nav, press the nav button on the right hand side and that's going to load up your sat nav and then in there you, you put your destination it's it's a sat nav nice and straightforward if you're driving along the road normally and you want to be able to see what's behind you you can just press the cam button and that's going to bring up your rear view camera without being in reverse you've then got your radio connect your phones to it do all your bits and bobs that you want through your head unit 
underneath that we've got your um, blowers so left one is your temperature cold and hot fan speed at the bottom your aircon button direction of the fan and then recirculation or not underneath we've then got heated mirrors central lock-in and your hazards okay. and that's pretty much it with the Corrado guys so um, thank you for watching and if you have any questions just give us a call or pop and see us on our website